cardboard cutouts. So I tend to find as I get into a character and who like the decisions that you're actually starting to see them make um, and whether they contradict themselves, if you see them doing one thing and they're saying something else, and that actually helps me find the voice. Voice, yeah, I think voice is uh, less important in uh, in comics than it is in prose. Uh, although in the script, the words on the page that aren't dialogue is you know, has a voice, um, and in my comic. Most of my comic scripts, it's very conversational because you're really writing a script. Yeah, for the editor, but really writing it for the artist. And, yeah, it's uh, a conversation with the artist. Yeah, it's like you're trying to convey your excitement about something to the artist, so it's very different from, say, writing a screenplay where it's going to be read by executives or professional and there's, certain, and there's also a certain expectation. Like when you're screenwriting, uh, you know, there's lots of like, rules and, and sort of uh, expectations that even you know as you as you write screenplays you learn you know like less is more or they want more white on the page all that kind of stuff but when you're writing a comic book when you're writing a comic book you all you're doing is conversing and telling somebody you know in this panel this happens I see it as this shot I'll include a picture of it so that you, you know you don't have to do the legwork right. uh, you know it's 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 really informal so it shouldn't be daunting if you're doing a comic book out there when it comes to the time to actually breaking down the panels uh, and telling the artist what to draw because really like their job is to do the art you just want to make sure that the important things story-wise are in there so that they can do their job you don't have to decide every angle you don't have to decide you know um, what everyone looks like I mean if you have ideas great but you know it is a collaborative process so you know don't don't be scared away by well I don't know you know wide shot angle you know this that like uh, just write it you know and then have a conversation with your artist and the other thing that's interesting, especially if it is a script that you're writing that's, that is more conversational, intended for one person, is that what I what I see from a lot of people too is that you you never see in film and TV screenplays is a lot of like present progressive tense. So like the thing about describing panels is like I don't know. There's different opinions on this, but like you say like okay, Batman is sitting. Batman ever sat. Batman is sitting next to this, this is because you're describing what you're seeing, whereas in screenplay you would never write in a present Passive progressive voice. Is that, is that present progressive? Passive that... voice is, he is doing something, whereas if you said, he sits, or Batman sitting, would be present progressive. Well, but, cause, well, passive voice though is also is, it's like, this, you know, the bomb is dropped. As, right. You know, but any, any writing, I think, course that you take, anyone, uh, they, they try to break through of that, uh, of putting those, the, you know, the passive voice. You want to be as, as active and, and really strip away uh, and use as, many, as few words as possible to, to convey the idea. Like, I think that really helps. Um, we've been, like, babbling here, but my man over there had a question. Yes, in the back. Yeah, um, so I seem to notice that with a lot of writers, everybody has, like, 10, 15, 20 different books that they're doing at once. And it implies to me that if you had one book and one story that you were trying to tell in one series, that you couldn't really support either yourself or a family or anything like that. Does it come down to numbers games like that? And I, I, and I don't actually want numbers, but I mean, does it, <laughs> does it come down to like, to be able to support yourself, you gotta do a couple yeah, of Yeah, I mean, ones? in comics, you know, unless you're a, like a big name uh, writer who, who, you know, pretty puts fannies in the seat, so to speak, um, you know, the average writer can't live on one book. I mean, not definitely not living in LA or New York. You know, maybe you know in uh, in countries where rent. And it doesn't take a month to write a 22-page book. No. So what are you going to do for the rest of your time? You got to work on other things. Uh, so you know, while your artist is slaving 20 hours a day, you know, 25 days a month uh, doing the art, you're eating bonbons, writing another script. <laughs> yeah, we may not be able to afford bonbons though. <laughs> you got to get the knockoff bonbons. Bonds. Bonds. <laughs> How has the popularity of uh, trade paperbacks affected your plotting for books? I mean, I think it's in the back of your mind. I, I don't think you, I mean, it depends. Like, for DC tells us, don't write for the trade. Do not write for the trade, just write your story. So, uh, when it, the stuff I work on for DC, I don't even think about it. But I, I think if you're going to self publish, I think you have to have a moment that you can cap four issues, five issues, six issues, yeah. eight issues, so that you can make the trade because the financial aspect of it, you know, the trade is that thing that, that stays on, on, on the shelf and, and it has a life, the floppy does not. 
So you have to have one eye on that. But you know, you, you can do a lot of ways. You can say that six issues is one feature length movie. You could say six issues is act one, like depending on, on you know what kind of story it's on season, you know, or it could be half a season on TV. Like uh, I don't think it's I don't think it's that important to, to worry about, but I definitely think you need to end your you know, four or five to six issues on something big that you can definitely put together in one story. I would disagree. I would say that Liar. for creator-owned books, it's actually very important. And not just That's for- That's not a disagreement. You said it's not as important. I think it's, it's more important. I think you said it's important. <laughs> Did you? Well, yeah. It's on your own creator. Yeah, you said it's something to be aware of. Yeah. <laughs> okay, well, well, I would say, He's either vehemently disagreeing or he is. I was agreeing. trying to bring some some like drama and trouble. Sure. Go ahead. Sure. Sure. Everyone wants to hear what you have to say. Hit him with a bat. Hit him with a bat. Um, no, he's already. Uh, I don't want to uh, no, I would I would just say that not even from a creative standpoint, from a logistics and scheduling standpoint, it's actually very important. And the model, a lot, one of the big models right now. Is and I don't know if, if Todd follows this or not, but um, you you publish the first arc or, or you publish an arc and then there's you know like a month off and then a trade yep. and then the next arc starts and what that allows you to do is keep the same creative team so you're able to cultivate fans and build a, a community with the book and it's the same team over and over again without fillings without you know things like that and so. Knowing where the trade is allows you to schedule, because most artists can't do it monthly. That's just the nature of comics right now. So um, you're able to plan ahead for that. Yeah, we do four to six issue arcs. We take a break, like last break was like three months between, and the trade comes out within that three, four month period. And hopefully you get a lot of new readers on board with the new trade, and then you know, when the next arc starts, you got those people also buying the floppies, and hopefully you haven't lost the people that you know bought the first arc. Uh, That's my only fear with it. It is a it is a, a legitimate concern. You do there's there's a certain amount of kind of oh you haven't been around for three or four months we forgot about forgotten about you and moved on to another book you know that kind of thing. But uh, if you want to keep the same artist, or if your artist refuses to let any other artist work on the book, this is my experience. Uh, <laughs> I, I, you know, very casually suggested maybe we should get somebody to do a, an arc. And he was like, no, I do all the pages. <laughs> uh, 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 don't kill me. Um, yeah, Rod's doing on Cowl, he's, he's doing everything. He, he started by doing all his pages as watercolors, and they were amazing, but it was taking like five days per page. Um, so now he's doing everything, he's doing everything digitally, and, and he, before this, had been Basically, he's been coloring for the last 10 to 15 years. Like, that was his job. So he's handling everything, um, but I think we are actually, we're going to structure for, like, a one-shot in between arcs. Yeah. And because the world is so big and there are so many different time er different eras that I can play with, like, you, you know, there's a way to structure that. Yeah. So he started hand-painting watercolor, and now he's digitally watercoloring? It's going to look... Exactly. They look very, they look very similar. That's yeah. Cool. I mean, if you actually go in and especially high res and look, I mean, you can tell what's traditional and what's painted. But I also agree. I, I think he probably watercolor scans them and then tweaks them anyway. Like, yes, like he does. his final product is in Photoshop. So I think you know it would probably be that. That's pretty cool.